Hello everybody, this is Tom Halstead and I'm Dean of the School of Biblical Studies at the Masters University. I've been here for about 35 years, but also I've uh, had the privilege of speaking up at Camp Gilead for two or three summers and thoroughly enjoyed it. And so this is a privilege to be able to just, uh, just help you with your devotions um, as you're studying through Mark this uh, summer. And I thought I would do chapter 13, uh, do three devotionals for you or lead you in three devotionals uh, because Mark 13 is really one event. It covers the events of the tribulation. And it's not as extensive, of course, as Revelation, but it, it does give us some understanding of of, of the tribulation and uh, the events that are going to go on. And so the first day, which is today, I want to discuss the first three and a half years, which are the birth pangs. And the second day, tomorrow, I want to discuss the second three and a half years, uh, which is the, the, the real wrath uh, of God. And then the third day uh, is really the explanation. That is the end of uh, chapter 13, and that is sort of the explanation of this uh, entire event. So as we look at this event, we find that in chapter 13, it is found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Probably Matthew is the most extensive, covering two chapters, and uh, we know that uh, in chapter 24 and 25. We probably know that one best of all of the three of the three Gospels. But they ask the same questions in all three Gospels. And uh, so there's really harmony here. There is good harmony between all three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, as we read in chapter 13, I want to read the, uh, the first uh, four verses. It says, And as he was going out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, behold, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings and Jesus said to him, Do you not see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another, which will not be torn down. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew were questioning him privately, telling, uh, tell us, is what they said, tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things are going to be fulfilled? Now, do you see the two questions that they ask? They've if you can picture this, they've come out of the temple, they are looking at the temple buildings, and then they are walking up uh, Mount of Olives, and they're sitting there, and there's uh, four of them, at least, uh, Peter and John, James and Andrew, and they are asking him, because he says to them, do you see all these stones, these buildings, uh, these, these stones in the buildings, they're all going to be torn down. And then he says, um, and then they ask, well, when is this going to happen? And what is going to be the sign of your coming? Now, if you, if you get that, you understand that they're thinking that the destruction of the temple is also going to be the, the inauguration of his kingdom and of his coming again. And they actually believed that Christ would return in their lifetime as most generations do today. I mean, we think that Christ may return in our lifetime. So, so they're thinking that, and they're saying, when is all of this going to happen? Well, as we go through this chapter, we will find out that he doesn't answer the first question. He doesn't tell them when the building and when the temple is going to be destroyed. Now, we know from hindsight that it was destroyed about 40 years later in 70 AD when the Romans came in and actually just totally raised the temple and the buildings and not one stone literally was laid upon another. But what Jesus does is he focuses on the second part. And that is the ending, his kingdom, and when he's going to return again. And so he says to them in verse 8, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines. These are simply the beginning of birth pangs. 
Now, when you see the birth pangs, then you know that the birth is fairly close. And so he is giving them information about what's going to happen just before he returns. And the information that he's giving them is going to be in the, in the uh, idea of birth pangs. Now, notice what some of these birth pangs are. Beginning in verse 5, he says, See to it that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name saying that um, I am he, and they will mislead many. Well, that's certainly going on today. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, don't be frightened. Uh, not, the end has not yet come, yet. And when you hear of nation arising against nation and <clears throat> kingdom against kingdom, and that certainly is happening today, then just realize that these are the beginning of birth pangs. Now, these birth pangs will take place, according to Matthew 24, these birth pangs are going to take place in the first three and a half years of the tribulation. Now, you have to realize the rapture has already occurred. And the believers, the church-age believers, are now in heaven. So what we're dealing with is we're dealing with a period of seven years, and here's the first three and a half years, and we're dealing with a period of time in which there will be many, many people come to Christ, but they're not part of the church age. The rapture is gone. It's not even mentioned here in this, uh, this section, chapter 13. He says in verse 9, Be on your guard, for they will deliver you to the courts, and you'll be flogged in the synagogues, and you'll stand before uh, governors and kings for my sake as a testimony. And it also says the gospel must be preached to all the nations. So there is going to be quite a revival in terms of the gospel being preached during these first three and a half years of birth pangs. So we need to realize that this is the first three and a half years. But tomorrow, we're going to talk about the next three and a half years in this event called the Tribulation.